Well, greetings, greetings to you and praise the Lord. This is Pastor Kelvin Lucas coming to you from Take It By Force Ministries and Dominion Tabernacle. Truly, it is, it is an honor and a privilege to be able to come before you and to share some words of encouragement with you that the Lord has laid upon my heart. We thank you once again for tuning in with us. Over the next uh, few weeks, I'll be talking uh, from a subject, the fruit of the womb, the fruit of the womb. And in this uh, series of lessons, I'll be dealing with the idea around uh, legalized abortion. Uh, I believe that abortion is a serious issue in our country, and I believe that it is time for the church to stand and present a biblical uh, perception around this uh, around this course of action. Uh, since 1973, uh, 60 million babies have been aborted in America. Uh, of that. Uh, 19 million of those babies, according to the statistics, happened to be, um, were African-American uh, babies. Uh, statistics go on to say that roughly 360,000 African-American babies are aborted in this country each year. So you're looking at roughly 1,000 uh, black babies that are aborted per day. And the sad part is is that the number one uh, killer in the African-American community is abortion because 36 percent of the abortions that take place in our country occur in the uh, African-American community. Now the African-American community makes up roughly around 12.6 uh, percent of the population in America and the African-American female represents 14% of the childbearing uh, population. It's also noteworthy to understand that 79% of Planned Parenthood, of course, which is the product of Margaret Sanger, who um, sought out to diminish the black population, 79% uh, of uh, Planned Parenthood abortion facilities are located within walking distance of minority uh, communities. And so uh, I think it's really worth the cause to talk about uh, this act of abortion and the impact that it, it has had in our country and not only nationally but also I believe globally uh, it has had a tremendous impact you know and we think about the coronavirus and how it started and how when you look at it it has impacted globally when you think about the child sacrifice that has taken place globally and you look at how when it initially hit our country uh, how it really hit uh, the New York area really hard first. Well, you know, between 2012 and 2016, uh, it is according to statistics that black mothers uh, in the New York City area, they terminated 136,000 uh, babies and birthed 118,000. So during that time frame, you had uh, more babies that were terminated, that were aborted, than were given birth amongst African American uh, females. Now, uh, the root cause uh, of this trend, it is said that it's the socioeconomic status, of uh, the impartiality, the the um, the imbalance of the socioeconomic plight of the African-American female in our country, uh, the socioeconomic status downturn uh, points at racism, poverty, and lack of access to health care as being the primary reasons why 
uh, so many babies are aborted in this country. But I believe we have to go beyond that, and we have to 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 look at uh, stop pointing the finger at others, and 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 really, really uh, start thinking about what are what are other options available uh, to the African American community or to women at large that may be able to help reduce especially again in the African American community to reduce this this 36% abortion rate now and let's, when we look at the bible you know uh, the fruit of the womb the fruit of the womb I want to talk about that for a few minutes what is fruit what is fruit and and when you think about fruit fruit represents productivity absolutely fruit represents the positive productivity of an individual's labor uh, it represents the potential the progencia of greatness uh, it represents uh, the possibility of, of of giving back of contributing back to the positive cause to the uh, well-being of humanity within society you know when you think about a fruit from a fruit tree uh, you want to be able to offer fruit that is beneficial and I think that you know the Lord looks for us he looks for a society to be fruitful to be able to provide some type of positivity uh, towards the betterment of humanity uh, when you think about fruit you also think about fruit as being uh, the, a potential successor absolutely a potential successor when you think about for example uh, we, we we are going to need future pastors future elders future ministers within the church okay because you know as as leadership gets older there has to be succession planning in place to be able to continue to carry on uh, the work of the ministry you know we, we continuously we need teachers in the educational system uh, we're going we need doctors lawyers uh, we need uh, politicians we need we're going you know we need uh, vice presidents to uphold uh, various offices we need presidents uh, scientists engineers architects uh, senators representatives uh, social workers uh, we are in need of individuals to continue these trades uh, electricians plumbers HVAC uh, businesses we, we we need successors and if we continue to abort if we continue to do away with uh, the potential the, if we continue to do away with the fruit that is in the womb then we are seriously jeopardizing our future we're jeopardizing our economy because if we as we can if we continue at the rate that we're going uh, the the consumers you know the consumers uh, these babies that are aborted represent future consumers you know and so then we have to look at the global impact the totality of this uh, idea around abortion and the dangers that it poses uh, to society also when you think about when you think about the fruit uh, fruit is also considered to be uh, disciples disciples represent fruit absolutely yes disciples represent fruit disciples represent the potential for greatness uh, and I think one of the greatest examples of discipleship is, of course, Jesus and uh, his 12 disciples in the book of Matthew chapter 4. OK, in Matthew chapter 4. Um, verse number 19. All right. Verse number 19. You know, when Jesus was ha was getting his band of uh, disciples together. It says there, and he said unto them, and he was talking to uh, Peter and Andrew, two brothers who were 
fishing because that was their trade. He said, I didn't know, follow me. He extended an invitation to them. Uh, these two men represented potential fruit in the kingdom. Absolutely potential fruit. He said, follow me. He extended an invitation to them. Jesus gave them an opportunity. You know, when, when we abort the fruit of the womb, we are denying that fruit the opportunity to embrace a relationship with God. To know who God is. We are denying them the opportunity to embrace a relationship with Jesus Christ. He says that to the, to the men there. He says, follow me and I will make you. These two brothers, they started out as fruit in the womb. They started out as, as fruit in the womb of their mother. And so, they had, and so they had to grow and develop and get to this point in their life to where Jesus could extend them an opportunity. Greatness starts in the womb. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. But he said that follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He said, and the key word, the key right there is I will make you. The word make, which implies that the intention of Christ was to have a deliberate impact. Was to have a deliberate impact on the life of these men when you know when he says i will make i will make that takes me to isaiah chapter 64 verse number eight look at that for a minute in isaiah chapter 64 verse number eight where it says but now o lord thou art our father we are the clay you know clay represents that material that is used to make uh, pottery he says, we are the clay and thou art our potter. Okay. The potter is the one who, who has the responsibility of taking the lump of clay. Okay. Interacting with the clay, touching the clay, molding the clay, and turning that clay into a great work of art capable of holding and uh, capable of, of receiving, capable of holding something of greatness. It says in, in, verse six, in verse 8 of Isaiah 64, And we all are the work of thy hand. The prophet Isaiah right there, he, what he's recognizing that is that the, the children of Israel, they are simply clay in the hand of God clay in God's hand and and when you are and when you are in God's hand you give him you allow him the opportunity to work on you to to, to and to mold you and to make you and to shape you into becoming that which you were created to become but you have to be given the opportunity you have to be given the opportunity to produce you have to be given the opportunity for God to touch you thank you Lord for God to put his hand upon your life. For God to be able to put his hand upon your life and to take you through the ups and the downs. That's part of the making. That's part of the molding process. To be faced with adversity. That's where faith comes in. Faith comes in in the face of adversity. That even when you are confronted with with negativity, when you are when when your back is up against the wall, when it looks like the odds are not in your favor, that's not a time to abort, but that is a time to turn to God and say, Lord, I need your help in this hour to help me. I can't see my way through this, Lord. Help me. Help me. Ah, uh, the circumstances may not have been what I would have imagined, but God, here I am in this circumstance and situation. Help me. That's the job. The job of the potter is to take the lump of clay and whatever the clay represents and to make it and mold it and shape it into becoming something of greatness. 
And so when he told the when he told the disciples back in Matthew 4 19, he said, I will make you fishers of men. I will give your life meaning. I will give your life purpose if you will just give me the opportunity to do so. And when we abort the fruit of the womb, we are denying that fruit the opportunity to allow God's hand to touch, to make, and to mold it into becoming something of greatness in society. So not only does the fruit represent the progency or the greatness or potential, not only does fruit represent the success, the future successors, but and not only does fruit represent disciples, but also fruit represents the child. The fruit is the is the child in the womb. Absolutely, children are precious in the eyesight of God. The fruit that is in the womb is precious in the eyesight of God. In Matthew eighteen, in Matthew eighteen. Matthew 18, chapter, uh, chapter one, Matthew chapter 18, verse 1, you know, his, uh, Jesus' disciples uh, came to him and they asked him, saying, Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So the idea there was around addressing this idea of what is, who is great? And oftentimes when you think of greatness, you think of, of, of status, you think of title, you think of pageantry, you think of... Uh, position. But in verse 2, in response to that question, Jesus called a little child the fruit from a mother's womb. He called a, a little, he called. He called this child. It doesn't give the child's name. All he said that he called a little child unto him. The child, which was the fruit of a mother's womb that was given the opportunity to be birthed. Doesn't say anything about the social eco status, the social eco status of the child. All it says is that Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of the crowd and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, as fruit of a mother's womb, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Be converted in your thinking. In other words, be teachable. Humility. It's about humility, being humble. And become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. God looks for humility. He uses the example of a child. We have to learn how to be teachable in this hour. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child. He uses the little child as an example to, a, to an adult audience. You have to be, you have to learn how to be humble. He says, humble himself as this little child. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He, he goes on to say in verse 5, and whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me also. But whoso shall hurt one of these little ones, whosoever shall hurt God is deeply concerned about the hurting of the fruit in the womb. Whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believeth in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses. And I believe that the, that the fruit of the womb, the seed of the womb has, has been the target of many has been the target of the abortion offense. And God is not pleased with it at all. Another another uh, instance in the Bible, in, in, still in the Gospel of Matthew, the next chapter, Matthew chapter 19, where it says that then were brought, there were brought unto him little children. Again, the fruit of, of a mother's womb that he should put that he should what put his hands on them and pray absolutely the fruit of the womb the womb represents an opportunity for God to lay his hand absolutely thank you lord to lay his hand and pray over that fruit pray over that potential pray over that greatness possibility 
not to destroy it, not to marginalize it, not to deny it the opportunity of life, but to touch and to pray over it. Little children were being brought unto Jesus that he might touch them, absolutely. And pray for them, pray. It says there, but his disciples rebuked him. Tried to deny the opportunity. But Jesus said unto them, suffer a little, suffer little children, allow little children the opportunity. Don't deny the fruit of the womb, the opportunity. He said, suffer, allow little children and forbid them not. The fruit of the womb is precious in the eyesight of God. It represents opportunity. It represents potential. It represents the clay in his hand. And we are doing a grave injustice in our society when we continuously deny the fruit of the womb. And forbid them not to come unto me. Don't deny them the opportunity to come unto me. Don't deny them the opportunity to be embraced by me. Don't deny them the opportunity to get to know who their God is and the plans that he has for them to achieve greatness in the earth realm for his glory. The fruit of the womb is so important. It represents the greatness and the potential of God in the earth realm. And the Lord is calling the church now more than ever to stand up and proclaim the, the sanctity of the fruit that is in the womb. Someone may say, well, what about rape? And that and that and that is and that is that is a a tragic situation. An incest. That again that again is a tragic situation. But even even in that, even in that, even in that, if you take the fruit out of the womb, then it's just as bad as the one who put the fruit in the womb to begin with. Taking it out and not allowing the, the opportunity. Some of us, some of us that are here, we didn't get here by the best of times. We didn't get here by the best of situations and circumstances. We, we, some of us, we arrived here. The vehicle that brought us here was not because we, not because uh, we had uh, a, a, a total family unit in place. A good paying job, two cars and a garage and a, and a picket fence around the house. We, we didn't get here. Some of us, we didn't get here on in that t in that kind of vehicle. Some of us, we got here because of uh, because of something that happened in the in the in the back of a car, or in some or so we didn't we didn't get it. We don't we don't we don't get to choose the vehicle that gets us here. But we are thankful for the opportunity that we have had to have a chance at life and to have a chance to produce greatness, to have a chance to get to know who, who God is and to be able to produce fruit that's going to bring him glory in this hour. All things work together. And when you read the Bible and you look at the Bible, you understand that there are many that there are that there are many that God utilizes negative circumstances and situations. In this hour, God is challenging us around the fruit of the womb. And understanding that the the fruit of the of the womb represents greatness. It represents potential. It represents the opportunity for God to put his hand. On the individual's life. And to produce greatness. If there's one today. Who's listening. You know, and you may be 
out of relationship with God. You don't know who Jesus is in the pardon of your sins, but you want to give your life to him on today. Today is a great day for you. It doesn't matter what you're struggling with, adultery, idolatry, or alcoholism, drug addiction, homosexuality, lesbianism. If you're caught up in pornography, fornication, masturbation, if you're a prostitute, it doesn't matter. Christ died for you. But you have to make a decision to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. If that's you on today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I don't know you as my Lord and Savior. But I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And I believe that you live now and forevermore. And I lift my hands and I lift my heart and I ask you to come into my life right now as my Lord and personal Savior. I receive you now. Come into my life, Lord. Give me an opportunity to achieve greatness for you. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me, then I believe with you. If you were sincere that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Email us at takeitbyforce.net. Go to our website, takeitbyforce.net. Click on the contact us button at the bottom of the page. Tell, Give us your name and your mailing address. We have a booklet, a little pamphlet that we want to send you to help you in this new direction that you've chosen in life. It's a good day for you and we celebrate it. We celebrate it with you. We're getting ready to close out our broadcast today, our podcast today in prayer. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for this opportunity to study a word. Lord, there may be a young lady, a lady out there that's contemplating abortion. But Lord, I pray, God, that something has been said today that has challenged that potential decision. Lord, I pray, God, that you will allow your word to minister to that individual that they may seek assistance that they may seek help to nurture and to grow that potential that fruit that is on the inside of them father we we thank you for goodness we thank you for mercy that is available to each and every one of us father but we know that life is not always fair and life is not always easy but Lord, if we have faith enough to, to, to surrender, if we have faith enough to, to give our all to you and to place ourselves in your hand, just as the clay is in the hand of the potter, God, we want you to utilize, utilize us in this hour for greatness. We pray for that, for that lady, that woman. We pray for leadership. Leaders in the church, leaders in community, in the community to come up with programs to help minister and to help reach out to those who are in need in this hour. Father, we pray for our national leadership, local leadership. Help us as leaders to meet the needs of the marketplace in this hour. We thank you, O oh Lord. We pray for families, Lord. We pray for we pray for 